Dr. Vickers, uh, you've used the term global jihadist movement and thus identified the global jihadist movement as the focus of America's fight against terrorism. Isn't it a fact that the global jihadist movement is very closely linked to the teachings of Wahhabism? Um, yes yeah, or no? Yeah, I would say they draw inspiration in a, in a perverted sense. But yes, I would say, and Robert may want to elaborate on that. And, but and the, two, the two big jih global jihadists are Al-Qaeda and ISIL. And they draw their inspiration from the Wahhabi uh, strain of Islam. Isn't that correct? Yes. And uh, the Wahhabism is a 18th century offshoot of Sunni Islam, which began in the land uh, that has come to be known as Saudi Arabia. Isn't that correct? Yes. And Wahhabism seeks to purify Islam by getting rid of a number of human behaviors and practices that it considers to be sins against uh, uh, Allah. Correct? Uh, correct. And uh, Wahhabism is a strict, fundamentalist, highly intolerant strain of Islam. Correct? Yeah. Correct? And uh, now, isn't it a fact that the Saudi ruling monarchy derives its legitimacy by reliance on the ideology of Wahhabism? Mm. You want to? The Saudis are riding a tiger. The, the Saudis are riding a tiger. So, uh, so if you will answer you know, what I'm question, saying, what I'm saying, don't, isn't it a fact? No, it's a, I wouldn't put it that way. I would say it's not a fact that they depend solely on Wahhabism for their legitimacy. They derive the legitimacy from a variety of things. One of them is Wahhabism, but it is not the only one. Well, is it fair to say that Wahhabism is the state-sponsored religion of Saudi Arabia? Yes, the Saudi government sanctions Wahhabi imams in their major mosques. Well, as a matter of fact, the Saudi monarchy promotes Wahhabism through official state-sponsored mosques and through religious schools known as madrasas all over the world. Isn't that correct? Yes. And isn't it true that the Saudi government, Wahhabism through, throughout the world, uh, based on uh, its oil and gas revenue? Absolutely, the government's revenues, directly or indirectly, help the proselytizing that you mentioned. And uh, the Wahhabism ideology lines up with the ideology of ISIL. Isn't that correct? I would say no. For example, the Wahhabis in Saudi Arabia, the official ones, do not kill Shia. They persecute them. They do not have equal rights. They do not have equal rights, but they don't kill them. However, a Shia in Mosul or a Shia in Raqqa is liable to be killed. Well, yeah, I'm, but it's true, though, that the ideology of ISIL lines up with Wahhabism. I would say it's, it's a starting point, and then the Islamic State has taken it several steps farther. Yes. And uh, is it fair to say that Saudi support for the teachings of Wahhabism create fertile ground for ISIL recruitment efforts? I think Saudi promotion of Wahhabism is absolutely a problem in terms of Islamic State recruitment. And so we will be unable to defeat the global jihadist movement, which is based on largely Wahhabism, which is a state-sponsored religion of Saudi Arabia, without somehow enlisting the support of the Saudi royal family 
in withdrawing its financial support for Wahhabism. Is that a fair assessment? So in this in 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 the discussion we had earlier about dealing with radicalization in the first place, that's what th this is what you're talking about, right? I think Saudi Arabia is is a center of where that needs to take place. So there needs to be a discussion with the Saudis about their support for Wahhabism and and how it should be treated and how they should think about it. So absolutely right. What was the latest amount of arms that we sold to Saudi Arabia, the latest shipment? I think it was, what, $100 million worth of uh, uh, arms? Well, there's support for the uh, campaign in Yemen, but the, the arms sales that occur periodically are in the billions of dollars. Thank you. Thank you.